Emperor Galvar walked through the dimly lit hallway towards the secluded room that the two aliens were escorting him to. Looking around, he couldn't hide his distaste, his mandibles flaring and trembling uncontrollably. The metallic clang that his talons made with each step he took only added to the knowledge that he was inside the construct of an alien mind. The trio arrived at their destination in mere moments, and the metallic, colorless doors opened to reveal a table, two chairs, one for him and the other manufactured to support the strange anatomy of his peoples. He shook his head, refusing to acknowledge them as such even if the reality and the sole reason he was there was to achieve the same goal. Tiredly, he made his way to his chair and sat on it. Idly, he watched with his four eyes that on the table laid a piece of parchment. His mandibles flexed and felt as if one of his hearts skipped a beat as he remembered what that piece of paper contained. The emperor didn't wait for long for the doors to open again. Looking at the female, the woman, if he recalled correctly, he couldn't help but examine her for a moment. Unlike the vast majority of other humans he had seen and dealt with, she wasn't wearing any form of power armor, conventional armor, exoskeleton, or even carried a weapon on her. The uniform she wore spoke not of military might, but one more dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge or laws. Emperor Galvar, the woman spoke with gentle barking noises, the translator all but plucking the sounds her mouth made and transforming them to his language. You must be Ambassador Talina, Galvar said, bowing his head in the customary sign of greeting for his people. Talina returned the gesture and approached the table with a slow, cautious pace. I am. I hope your transport was accommodating. Galvar tried but failed to look away as he replied. It was. Your aesthetic decor, however, leaves much to be desired. This is a military vessel, Emperor Galvar. In other circumstances, we would be having this meeting on a diplomatic ship. Alas, that is not the case. Reaching the table, she sat on her chair and leaned forth, resting her elbows against its hard, cold surface. Do you wish for some refreshments? I'd rather do what I've come to do and leave if you don't mind, Ambassador, Galvar replied, his mandibles flaring and his tucked wings threatening to unfold themselves. Are you quite sure about that, Emperor? she asked in a serious, deep tone. Do you know what will happen once you sign that treaty? He felt his stomach's churn and twist inside his thorax. Nearly chittering, he replied, I wouldn't be here otherwise. I've read what that document contains enough times to have it memorized. Yes, human, I know what will happen. Talina sighed. Let me rephrase my question then, Emperor. Do you understand what will happen? Galvar closed his eyes and his body trembled. I've read and seen your history, what you did, what you've done, what your species has achieved. He opened his eyes. I know what you did to the Borshai. The Borshai, Talina whispered the name in barely contained contempt. May I tell you a little story, Emperor? Why? It won't change my decision to sign the treaty, he replied. Because I'm afraid you need to know a bit more about humanity than what the info package could ever tell, she insisted. What more is there to learn? You slaughtered the Borshai, did you not? Galvar said, feeling his exoskeleton shudder for not the first time in his life. Indeed we did, she admitted. Several seconds passed until the emperor gave her a soft nod. When we, humanity that is, reached for the stars, finally breaking away from the confines of our solar system, we did so expecting to be received as monsters, primitives, barbarians, or as little more than another competitor on the galactic stage. She paused for a moment, musing her words carefully. You see, when we developed the hyperdrive, we did so not as a unified species. Science fiction, epic stories, all kinds of possible scenarios had been conjured by our writers, artists, and more about what meeting alien life would be like. Frankly, it was impossible to prepare for every single option presented to us. What do you mean? Galvar asked, having never heard of such information before. The package your admiral delivered never touched on that. Only some of your history, your conflicts, and some of your highest and lowest achievements. We would have followed the usual path of approach, but our current situation could hardly be called usual, don't you think, Emperor? Talina chuckled, and Galvar simply remained silent. Rushed improvisation aside, there were several frightening scenarios placed before us. 
Could we be the first intelligent species in the cosmos? Could we be the only one? What if the universe ended after cracking FTL travel? Would we meet a ravenous, mindless hive mind? Would we stumble across a galactic union of sorts? Would there be war as our first contact? She chuckled. Just to name a few? Galvar was stunned and baffled. What species could ever dream up so many outcomes upon reaching the stars beyond? Apparently, humans could and did. However, the most popular belief was that if we were to meet intelligent alien life as advanced or more so than us, then surely concepts like gods, religions, faith, and make-belief would have been expunged from their society, throwing it aside, discarding it as useless in favor of embracing logic, science, and development. What? Galvar chittered, unable to believe what he had just heard. Talina smiled somberly. We thought... We really, really thought that we would be seen as primitives or treated as the laughingstock of the galaxy should we encounter the aforementioned galactic union. She used her fingers to make quotation symbols in the air. Galvar couldn't say anything, so he just stared at the human across the table, surprised that the translator system in the room was advanced enough to relay what her gesture meant. Imagine our surprise when first we discovered the stellar forum of civilizations, and second, when we discovered that religion wasn't something to be laughed at, but the norm and staple of every sapient species. Why would your people ever think that? He asked, confused. It was a good thing he was already sitting, for the revelation would have surely made his legs tremble at the sheer absurdity of that notion. Many reasons, but once we began to speak with the few species that actually bothered to respond to us, we realized a few things. We thought the galactic community would be thriving, not be just a sorry excuse to keep a record of those civilizations that achieved FTL and made contact with the Forum. There was no Senate, no primordials, no precursors, not even a centralized empire, she said, shaking her head in disappointment. Knowing that most civilizations kept to themselves, except for those that were relatively close to one another, was a rather hard pill to swallow. Of course, not all civilizations make contact with the Forum, and equally true, the thought that every single civilization practiced religion in one shape or form was something we were not expecting. Then, five years later, as we began to expand and our territory now could be counted to possess 70 systems, the Borshai made contact with us. Galvar felt his entire body stiffen at the tone the ambassador used. For someone who was not part of the military, he could feel her aggression through her voice. No, not aggression. It was something more. Something deeper, anger, disgust, hate. I read what they did to your people, Ambassador, he said softly. No words I utter can say I understand your feelings. Talina took a deep, calming breath. We lost five billion people, Emperor. Five billion. Eight percent of our entire population in under three Terran months. And why? The Borshine religion was based on purity and war. They saw us as impure and thus decided to attack us without warning, without provocation. By the time our fleets could mobilize, they destroyed the stations, mining outposts, every vessel that couldn't flee, and the colonies on a third of our territory. We stopped them before they could breach into the more developed systems, thankfully, and then we began to push back. Hmm. Galvar couldn't say anything. There was nothing he could say after hearing that. The teachings of his once unshakable faith told him nothing, but the pain he could see reflected on the oddly expressive face of the human told him enough. There was still something he couldn't understand. How could you unify against the Borshai? Your pre-FTL history is a litany of carnage, death, suffering, betrayal, and bloodshed. Millions, billions died on your planet due to internal wars and conflicts between different nations. How could you, as a species, manage to survive for so long and thrive? Because the only thing that humanity knows how to do better than tear itself apart is band together for a singular purpose. And the Borshai gave us that purpose, she sighed. As we studied them and interrogated the prisoners, we found out why exactly they saw us as impure. The reason? Our religions. She stopped for a moment, standing up and giving the emperor her back. Every species out there has either one religion or a dominant one with two or three minor ones that aren't all too different from the main one. Watching her turn around to face him, Garlvar could only stare into her two green eyes as she continued. 
We humans have dozens of them, some major ones, some minor, always shifting, always changing, some even adopted alien religions. She chuckled. The Borshai hated us because to them, we were little more than animals that couldn't decide what faith to embrace and follow. Because of that, we were impure and they attacked, declaring a holy war of extermination against us. Letting us exist would allow us to infect the purity of their faith, or some nonsense like that. So your solution was to drive them back and exterminate them wholesale? Move a dozen asteroids to destroy their homeworld and bombard their colonies? Galvar asked. Why didn't you offer them a chance to live and change their ways? Talina blinked. We tried, but they were zealots. I'm sorry, but the translator didn't recognize that word, he said. They were religious fanatics of the worst kind, each and every single one of them. We tried to offer them terms of surrender up until the very last moment we could still change the trajectory of the asteroids. They refused every time. We didn't have to bombard several of their colonies because after news of what happened to their homeworld reached them, mass suicide acts followed. They blew space stations themselves and scuttled their ships just to remain pure. Galvar closed his eyes, processing the new information he had been given. It's funny how religion works or is perceived by other species. The Folhum treats science as a religion. The Virg's religion is based around commerce, wealth, and profit. The Kaljuk's religion is something to what we call atheism. There are no gods, higher powers, or anything like that. We simply are, and this is the only life there is. Ironic, is it not? Galvar failed to see the irony or humor in her words when it came to the hedonistic Kaljuk living their lives isolated from everyone else and indulging in all of the excesses of life. Putting those thoughts aside, he opened his eyes. You didn't answer my question, Ambassador. They attacked us, Emperor. Without provocation or any cause outside their own religious beliefs, she replied angrily, though not directed at the sapient sitting across the table. An eye for an eye only makes the whole world blind is a popular saying amongst many of my people's religions. It is also a stupid belief, in my opinion. But you're an ambassador, he protested. How can you, a woman of law, peace, and order, say such things? It is precisely because I am an ambassador that I can say that, Emperor. They killed five billion of our people, so in turn, we should have killed five billion of theirs to call it even. No, we were not going to do something so stupid as to give them a chance to muster their forces and strike at us again. We gave them a chance to surrender. They didn't take it, so we killed them all. Humanity has not known the threat of the Borshai ever since. Every child, man, woman, son, daughter, father, mother, and family they butchered without mercy was thoroughly avenged. And your wanton genocide was what sparked the Naowi to declare war on you, yes? Quite so. But unlike the Borshi, the Naowi were reasonable and accepted surrender when it was clear they couldn't win. Now they are our allies. After that, some species came to us asking for aid, not just militarily, mind you, whilst others tried to prove their mettle against us. Humanity has come a long way in only 30 Terran years, Emperor. And some time ago, we stumbled across you, the Otski and the Zurkake. Yes, he said weakly, still remembering the day human ships arrived at their home system and took positions on the homeworld's orbit, guns ever at the ready. I envy your people, Emperor Galvar, Talina said suddenly before retaking her seat. He watched her face intently, trying to find any indication of treachery or deception, but found nothing but sincerity. Why would you envy us, Ambassador? Are you perhaps trying to mock me, my faith, and my people? I would never dare to do such a thing, Emperor. I envy your faith, your conviction, she confessed. I ask again, Emperor, do you understand what will happen when you sign that treaty? I want this war to be over, Ambassador. I will carry the burden of the atrocity I'm about to commit proudly if it means the salvation of my people, the Emperor replied, leaning forth to press one of his three fingers against the parchment. Can you promise you'll try your best to end the conflict quickly and avoid further needless bloodshed? I can promise you we will try our best, Emperor. Talina leaned against her chair. But I'm afraid the Zerkake don't look like the kind to accept surrender easily, they remind me of the Borshai in some aspects, in fact, she said grimly. We will bring an end to it, Emperor, that I can promise you with all my heart, she smiled. 
Your religion, your beliefs represent the best humanity wishes to achieve. Peace, prosperity, love, understanding. You refused to fight back, refused to be broken. And when we offered our help, you denied us because of what would happen to your enemies. Thank you for making this sacrifice to save your people, Emperor Galvar. He nodded once, grateful for her words, but knowing how condemned he was for making this decision. After what I've seen them do to my people, he shook his head. Then he looked down at the piece of paper. So be it. With that said, he grabbed the quill set aside for him to use and sign the treaty. Reading the last paragraph, he hoped with all his strength that he was doing the correct thing for his people. The signatories of this treaty validate the entry of the nation known as Enkindlers of Light into the Sacrosanct Terran Union as a full protectorate. The Sacrosanct Terran Union shall aid and defend the Enkindlers of Light from any threat. May the end of this war come swiftly.